welcome to the channel. Welcome to Butterfly Transformations. You are with Tunisia Ali and I am with you and we are here today to get some daily healing inspiration for my beautiful butterflies that are constantly transforming just like me. Welcome, 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 soul tribe, kindred spirits, soulmates. I'm loving on y'all from a distance and up close here. That's the lovely non-melanated Albie that you hear in the background doing her thing. This is going to be a short video. <laughs> Won't be the first time you heard that. Gotta give a shout out to all my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful souls out there. All of y'all out there that are tackling what life is serving up to you right now, whether it's severing a relationship, whether it's bringing one to the forefront, whether it's renewing something, whether it's picking up and walking out of the situation, voting with your feet, shout out to the lovely Keisha, or it's tackling issues related to motherhood, officially Rena, pulling for you, loving on you, letting you know that none of us are out here alone. You are never alone, you're never alone. You are never alone. No matter what you think, you are never alone. You will not capsize and you will not fall by the wayside, okay? So let's tune in to today's message. And let's just see, we're gonna pull from the wisdom of the oracle. I feel like I want two cards from this uh, deck. I love this deck because I feel like it's balanced. You know, everything is not all happy-go-lucky, hunky-dory, wonderful. It gives a nice balance. So sometimes when I feel like we need a bit of a contrast, I'll pull from that deck and I haven't used it in a while and I really love it. And that was one of the things that I loved about it. We get tons of contrast in the tarot, but sometimes with the Oracle, we can get it um, a bit more fluff, which is fine too, because life should feel like fluff. Alvy, please, let me check the camera, y'all. Excuse me, let me make sure there's nobody out there. There surely never is, 632, there was someone out there. Oh, and that was probably me. Coming from outside, y'all, it's hot as hell. Hot as hell. When I say it's hot, I mean like, woo, y'all, some serious humidity out here in these streets. Protection. I told you you're never alone, okay? Protection. Very interesting here, huh? And you know, um, the waters could be raging, the rivers could be high, the tide could be coming in but you will be on dry ground. Just keep the faith and keep moving forward. Some of you may need to protect yourselves from the raging rivers and from things that may not serve your interests, do not have <clears throat> sincere uh, interest at heart, or possibly are just not supposed to be for you at this time. Okay, some of you may be standing on barren soil, okay, and need to make a way to find yourself in more in a more fertile landscape. So some of you might be needing to um, pay attention to certain things and be vigilant, okay, about protecting your interests. Yup, y'all, we got the hawk. We got the hawk. Now, you know hawks. That hawk is an amazing predator. When God wanted to give an apex predator in the skies, we got the hawk, okay? The hawk. First of all, we got a couple things here. You need to pay attention to what is going on on the perimeter around you. Please pay attention to what is going on. Um, uh, pay attention to the details of a situation. For some of you, you may not be able to see something because you could be too close to a situation. So you may need to step outside of that situation and take a look at the landscape. Now this could be the physical landscape around your house as in your neighbors, or this could be an emotional landscape, or it could be something in your romantic life. But this is saying it's, possi it's possible that there's something that is taking place that you need to see so that you can keep what is your concern, which is your life, your well-being, your stability, your overall health and wellness, your ha happiness, okay, so that you can keep things on an even keel. There may be something that you are missing. You could have someone around you that could be a predator. So let's look at this hawk in two different, give two different perspectives, the same way as we did this card here. Don't y'all love it too, y'all? I still have not put those fakies back on. I am not going back. 
I'm loving my little nubs. I digress. But the hawk now is an apex predator. It has no, no threat up there in the friendly skies. There's nobody that can do anything with that hawk, not really, all right? That hawk has the type of visual acuity that can zoom in on anything, that can zoom in on anything and take it out and that thing will never see it coming. Similar to owls, okay? But when we talk about owls, we talk about wisdom. When we talk about hawks in terms of a spirit totem, we're talking about rising above a situation and looking at the perimeter and looking at everything that could fall outside of our typical periphery so that we can see everything that we need to see, okay? That's what we're talking about and we're talking about protection. Some of you have protection around you, flying around you, but there are some of you out here who resonate with this message because you already know there's something going on, you're not quite sure what it is. You may be feeling like you're watched or you could be feeling a little bit as if um, you're outnumbered in a situation. You could be feeling prey to something. Now this could be prey to something in any aspect of your life. It doesn't have to be home life. It can be work life. It can be in a relationship. Just take the necessary um, steps to be sure that you are vigilant. Take the necessary steps when making decisions to make sure that you have considered everything that needs to be considered. Don't just take everything at face value. Remember that there are times where often you are too close to a situation. And we have two number 11s here. We have 80, 38, which is 11, and then we have 11. You know, 11 is a master number. Also, 11 could combine for two, but here I'm feeling 11 here. So this is this is something of um, major um, significance. At the bottom, we have the raven. I love ravens and crows because they bring and herald the news of magic, synchronicities, manifestation the divine coordination of events in order for things to happen. So uh, as it relates to this message here, what I want you to do is just pay attention to any hawks that cross your path. Pay attention to any ravens that cross your path. Pay attention to the alignment of events in your life or things that seem like coincidences that are around a particular subject or topic or area of your life. I feel like these are things that you may be needing to see. All right? Hmm. Hmm. These are warnings. These are omens. Not of something necessarily bad, I feel, but something that you may need to know in order to be in a space of protecting yourself in some particular way. If there's something that you have been feeling that you need to do, if there's something that you have been feeling is approaching you, if there's some sort of omen or there's some sort of uh, uh, foresight that you have about a situation, listen to what your higher guidance is telling you and follow that. Uh, everybody may not be able to see the way you're able to see. Everybody may not have the vision that you are able to have or be able to see what you're able to see. I feel like this has to do with a message or something you need to receive or something that you need to know about or pay attention to. We have a card here of detachment. For some of you all, it's very literal. There's something you need to detach yourself away from. There's something that perhaps you cannot see. Perhaps you are dealing with a predator. Only you know the answer to that question. All right, but I also feel when I see the energy of detachment, I'm going to read the message, but detachment, I feel, um, because what we have right under this, I can't help but have my eye drawn to that, is limitless, okay? When you're manifesting, for those of you who are trying to manifest things in your life, uh, the best thing that you can do, okay, is to remain in the highest vibration. The next best thing you can do is literally to detach from the negativity around you in the way of everything that is going helter-skelter, helter-skelter upside down in the world. That influences what you feel you're capable of doing. That causes you to give your power over to something outside of yourself, which really will put you more on that third uh, dimensional timeline where everything is about fear, where everything is about things that are going on outside of yourself that control your reality, okay? Remember, we are splitting into two different realities. Goodness knows there's more than that. How little do we know? We don't even know what we don't know. But what I'm experiencing and what I know for a fact has been happening over the last several years is in two worlds. 
There's a world that some of us live in that is like what I call a quantum world. Um, and then there's this third dimensional world, this illusion, this mirage that everybody thinks is real, that the majority of people, sheep, feed into, energize, and give a lot of energy to. And there's a lot of proof and support, uh, proof and support for that energy because of the things you see in your everyday life that you don't realize you have created, that they, they, that they didn't just get there. You created those things, but they feel like they're there and they're in your way and they're obstacles. And so you buy into some elements of the third dimensional reality. But I'm here to tell you that what the creator has promised, what God has promised, or whatever it is that you name that force field energy, that um, divine presence, whatever it is, that promise has been fulfilled. It will always be fulfilled, but it has been fulfilled. It's just that you hadn't participated at the level to, to, to open yourself up fully to the limitless wonder, to the limitless beauty, to the mercy, to the abundance, to the prosperity, to the affluence, to all of the wonderful things. You get stopped at Mr. Charlie. You get stopped at Uncle Sam. You get stopped at the IRS. You get stopped at the Acme, the Kroger, the Publix, or wherever it is. And then your kids bring in their stoppages and then the people you're dealing with who oftentimes aren't even on your frequency, they get stopped and so you get stopped. But the promise has been fulfilled and we're at a time in our human evolutionary journey where you are more capable and able right now to take advantage of things that you never thought you were able to take care of. But you got to clean the house. You got to clean the house, you got to clean the house here, you got to clean the house here. You got to clean the house and you got to get yourself right. You got to get yourself balanced. You got to be not ye of little faith. Ye of little faith will not get you anywhere. Okay, you've got to believe. You've got to believe. you got to walk, what is it, as they say, with faith and not by sight. You have got to have an unwavering intention and alignment in your heart that aligns with what the promise already is. I'm telling you that it is here and we can tap into it. You can tap into it, but you must believe. You must stop living in the past. The past is a source of all confusion. You must stop waking up feeling lonely every day. You must stop waking up feeling wanting and lacking and in a place of spiritual impoverishment. You've got to cut that stuff out. I know it seems like I'm way off. Hopefully whoever that's for is putting that together. But we have detachment. And I said initially, detaching from this chaos, from this fear journey. Be practical, do the things you know you need to do, but live in the space of abundance because only man has ever, ever talked about scarcity from the economics books where scarcity was we're competing for resources. That's why we live in this individualistic society. That's why we're always running out of things. That's why we, we've been acculturated to believe that there's never enough. There's always enough. There's hell. Do you see how many weeds and lush and magnolia and, and just ferns that been probably been here for 200 years and just shrubs and shrubs that just keep coming back no matter how much they get trimmed back all of the beauty that is in this universe all of the beauty that is you the miracle that is you okay you already have enough you already are enough just stop and take stop of where you are in your life journey, accept the things that come with the part of the journey that you are in, all right, and continue to co-create the rest of the stuff that you know you came here to do, and do not worry. Worry is your enemy, so you are detaching. Some of you are literally needing to um, up your standards. Some of you are actually needing to reach higher to get those things that you deserve those things that you desire. You have to remember that you are a limitless being. You are as limitless as, as anything else in this universe. And some of you need to realize that where it come, when it comes to love. So you really need to realize that when it comes to love. We're not just talking about a vibration here. For some of you, we're talking about relationships that you may be in that do not allow you to feel that sense of limitlessness, that sense of timelessness, that sense of boundlessness, but they call, call you 
into a state of constriction where you cannot reach for the sky, where you cannot feel your beautiful self, where you have to dream small because somebody else's world is limiting. So you cannot experience your limitlessness. And so as a result, you need to consider what it is you need to do in order to be detaching. Those of you who are out here manifesting beautiful stuff in this reality, release yourself from the outcome. Just trust that it's coming. Stop worrying. Stop, 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 stop worrying. Trust that it is coming and let it come to you. When you are taught, when someone tells you that you need patience, when people tell you that you need patience, oftentimes it's because ye of little faith. We need patience when we don't have faith. If you knew that everything you wanted was on the other side of that tree outside that you look at every day and you couldn't move, but it was coming to you at the rate of maybe two or three centimeters every single day, eventually it was going to get to you. Wouldn't you continue living your life? Some of you need to do that with regard to love. There's too many things that are of value today that you already have in your life or that you're working on manifesting in your life without belaboring or enslaving yourself to those things that have either left your life or need to leave your life. There's too much beauty in the world and that beauty isn't always going to be found in another person at the time that you feel is right. Many of you ask me questions about relationships and love and all of this stuff. You've been waiting forever. Well, you got to get to the point to where you're no longer waiting, where you know, where you wake up and you're no longer thinking about it, where you wake up and you feel complete and beautiful and happy and content. Nurture contentment. My sister, who, the one that passed away, she used to always say contentment is a treasure. Contentment is a treasure. Do you know where this world would be if people nurtured contentment, if they knew what contentment actually was, if they knew how to nurture contentment? They will feel joyful. They will feel grateful. They will be able to enjoy the journey. And I got to read my little quote. Y'all already know this life unfolds magically in its own time and in its own way. There is no destination, just the journey. There is no destination, just the journey, which is found in the now, okay? Find your now in every moment and smile. Remember, when you're in the now, you're with God, okay? You're with the ultimate. You're with the incomprehensible. You're with the in infinite. You are with the uh, beneficent. You are with uh, ar the, the merciful. You are with everything that you need right there in that moment. You can tell because you're breathing. That's when you get in contact with the breath. With the breath. And in that moment of breath, I don't care what the hell is going on, okay? you're going to feel your holiness. You're going to feel that divinity within. In that moment, you are unharmed. In that moment, you are protected. And it is in that moment, in that place of centeredness, that you can see everything. So just be quiet. Sit down. Let the magic occur. Whatever it is that you are trying to manifest in your life right now, it's coming. Okay, it's coming. Just hold the vision. Keep thinking about it and feeling great about it. Keep experiencing the bliss and embodying the triumphant feeling and the celebratory energy that you are when that thing is here because it is here. Can't you see it? It's here. It's here already. It's just making its way down through this density. But it, it really is here. The kingdom of heaven is within acts and ye shall be given. I have given you rivers with, with honey, rivers that flow beneath you with honey. Okay, which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? That is an ayah, or you could call it like a verse if, from a biblical standpoint in um, the Quran that is one of the most beautiful surahs. It's one of my favorite ones because it gives a blessing that God has given you. Like, for example, let's say I've given you a firmament on which to gaze. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? I have paired the moon and the sun in perfect unison. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? When you read something like that and you pick the scripture or whatever it is that you like to read that allows you to feel in touch with that aspect of yourself that is ethereal, that is the core of your soul. When you 
listen to those kinds of words and you really reflect on which of the favors of your Lord, of your creator, of your God, of your, your source, whatever, will you deny? You have to ask yourself, what are you denying? Are you denying that you know you got to leave out of here? Are you denying that someone you love is, is, has passed on and you're grieving maybe four or five years later? Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? We can't get out of this thing, this thing that we're here to experience. you got to experience it. So we got to work on how we're going to get through this, meaning how you going to get the load up the mountain? You're going to push it or pull it because you got to get it up the mountain. I have dislike of others, okay? Sometimes we form strongly negative feelings towards others. In truth, it is not them that we dislike, but their words, actions, and behaviors. And I'll say it's something within us that we have a problem with that we need to work on also. This card asks you to try to detach. We hear that word attach, detach more than once from the experience of their behavior and see them as a soul on their own unique pathway. The moment that I came up with that way of looking at other people and their shortcomings by saying they are where they are in their level of awareness, not to promote myself or give myself some type of superiority, but to accept that everybody's on their own journey and they're perfectly right for where they are on their journey. And who are you to sit over there and think that you're any better than anyone? Because you're not. I'm here to tell you, you ain't special and neither am I. None of us are. Not a single one of us, and anybody who thinks they are, I feel sorry for them, okay? You're not special. You're not special, all right? And I'm just going to say that again. Y'all say that again. You're not special, okay? You're not going to be the one that's going to be able to outrun whatever the life experiences are. You're not going to come out of here unscathed. You're not um, going to suffer any less than someone else because you belong to a certain class of people or a certain group of people or you feel that you are superior in knowledge to other people. Except where people are in their level of awareness because from whence you yourself have come. You were not always who you are today. When we know better, we do better whatever better is, but accept where people are in their level of awareness. It will help you to maintain inner continuity when people around you are losing their minds or they are off track or you find yourself sitting in judgment of someone. Just accept them where they are. That's where they're supposed to be. Just like where you are right now is where you're supposed to be. Everybody's on their, their soul. They're on their own unique pathway, attempting to manage their own challenging life lessons, y'all. Uh, I believe it was that card totally said it was a school, and I'm, I'm always saying you're on a PDP. You're on a personal development plan, and you're not getting out of here until you pass the courses that you agreed to take when you came in here. And if you don't pass them, you're just going to take them again. Do the homework. So detach from what people are doing in your environment that you are holding them accountable for. It doesn't mean you have to sit there and be married to them for an eternity or be married to their dysfunction. That's not what we are talking about. This is not the same as removing yourself from a situation to protect your own interests or to give yourself the best benefit that you can in terms of traveling um, this journey that you're on in the most intact way possible and seeking higher ground, all right? Because water does seek its own level. What we're talking about is being angry, being mad, judging people. No one gets out of here alive, but no one gets out of here and escapes the alamizan, the balance, the scales. Nobody gets out of here and escapes that. Whether you give it to them or not, they're going to get it. Worth the wait meaning the balance, whatever it is that they need to bring that balance into their life, whatever the lesson is, they will be served up that curriculum in the same way that you have. Everything always works out. The universe is just, God is just, okay? <laughs> Believe me, what doesn't come out in the wash always comes out in the rinse. I've learned that the hard way. Is something or someone not moving forward as fast as you would like? This card is here to reassure you. Hold fast. Be patient. The best things in life are worth waiting for. If that person hadn't stepped to the plate, that person that some of y'all keep waiting for, um, that lover or that person that you were hoping will come into your life, if that person has not stepped to the plate, 
it's because the time is not right. And if the time is not right, then that means that you are not ready. And it's just that simple. So instead of focusing on that, focus on the other things. Focus on cleaning house. Not cleaning your house, literally, but focus on the purge. Focus on up-leveling your mindset. Focus on feeling complete. Focus on contentment and all of the other beautiful things and realize that whatever it is that you want, it will be yours, but it most certainly is worth the wait. So make use of the time that you have now to do whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. All right? Okay. We're going to pull three tarot cards and then we're going to close out because we're already at 25 minutes. I think hopefully the message has been delivered. We had two cards of fallout. Let's get one more beautiful butterflies and transformation. If you have not purchased my book, Manifesting Your Masterpiece, make sure you get it on Amazon. Do not forget to go back and do a review. And thank you to all of you beautiful butterflies who are purchasing that book. Ten of Wands reversed, y'all. That's at the end. Okay? Okay. Six of Wands. Apply this to your situation. The Nine of Swords and the Ten of Wands reversed. There's a situation that you are in that is a no-win situation. Doesn't have universal support. It doesn't have support from all parties that are involved. It is not a successful situation and you are not feeling that it's successful, which means that you are no longer in a position to energize it in the way that it needs to be. And that came from somewhere. It was not born in a vacuum. This situation has created a lot of stress and anxiety. You have been going over this back and forth in your head. You just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, ruminating, ruminating, taking yourself through this, this drama. I like to say you're agonizing to the point to where you could even be losing sleep. But guess what? Even though this is an unsuccessful situation, uh, it's time for you to pull up uh, and, and move to fertile soil. All right. And that this has been something that you, you know, this is the energy around the situation. This may be what you're doing overthinking it, but ultimately you get to the place where you say, I I'm not going to do it anymore. It's too much. It's a burden. It's creating a misery for me. It's heavy. It's making the load on me be too much. I got too much going on. I can't take it anymore. It feels like this journey is never going to end. Oh, but it is because you put that load down there with that ten of wands. You're not doing it anymore because you love yourself too much. Okay? And you want to feel happy. You want to feel joyful. You want to feel invested in your own emotional health and well-being. And you are ready to usher in something else. And for some of you, this is a gift from God. So it is time for self love self love and remember like we've been getting this this kind of wonky energy for a minute here and keep in mind rome was not made in a day okay and for those of you who read the good book you even will say that god did not create the world in a day okay it took how many days and on what day did god rest is what you all will say um, different faith beliefs. The point is that Rome was not created in a day. The energy of change transpires over time. This is the energy around a situation. Eventually, a person gets tired of being haunted by ghosts of the past. They get tired of the mental conflict that comes about when we are living in resistance. Resistance to what is resistance to something that we need to let go but it takes time change takes time but i i do say this i remember one of my training um classes when i first came out of student teacher training and quit my teaching job the first time uh at the end of i think three years and went to to do to work for a te technology company I remember him saying all major decisions are made in nine seconds or less. And at the end of the day, when you finally make that decision, trust me, you're going to make it in nine seconds or less. And at that time, all of you will be in alignment, body, mind, spirit, all of you, all of your different channels, all of your chakras will be online when you make that decision. And when you make that decision, you'll be able to move full steam, full, 
force ahead because your emotions will be where they need to be and they will be stable enough to support what mentally you've already known you needed to do from a rational standpoint and spiritually from a heart-based place you already knew you needed to do anyway. It takes these emotions and feelings. They get way too much credibility from us as far as I'm concerned in this world. And they have way more power than they actually deserve. And they constantly drag you back and forth, back and forth, if you let them. But I digress. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Rest of your day, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to like or share this video or this channel with someone that you love. Oh, and well, let's take a look at a four agreement card. You want to get a four agreement card? Oh, maybe we are supposed to do that. Well, maybe. Let's see what fell down here. Take your life and enjoy it. Maybe that's what you're supposed to see. Take your life and enjoy it. Transform your life. Take action and expect the reward. And express, oh, what's this one? Express your love. Okay, express your love. Okay, and this is uh, talking about um, measuring your word by self-love. If you love yourself, then you'll express that love in interactions with others. And, and that's really true because if you love yourself, you take care of yourself. If you love yourself, you don't let negative thoughts creep in because you know they're going to destroy your health. If you love yourself, you don't let people come in to disturb your peace of mind because you realize that your life is your energy and your energy is your life. Okay, so y'all have a beautiful rest of your day. Don't forget to catch it. Bye.